So I had a Chevy Malibu that I couldn't seem to figure out why the transmission was slipping. I would go to accelerate to pass a car and it would just rev up and it wouldn't take off. And it actually almost got me in a couple head-on collisions because I couldn't generate the speed I needed to pass. So it was really dangerous. And nobody really posted anything online. My car had low mileage, less than 80,000. And it happened relatively early in the life of the vehicle. It ran fine, it just didn't accelerate fast. It would just rev up and not shift. I found out that that was actually related to another problem I had with that car, which was the code that came up PF16C, which is the rocker arm oil control solenoid, which seemed like it wouldn't be related at all, but completely related. I swapped that part out and next thing I knew, my car shifted fine, it had tons of power, the check engine light went away. So it goes to show you that while it might seem like a transmission issue, sometimes it's other things because with these electronics, everything's linked together in weird ways. So if you have a check engine light, then I suggest just checking out what the check engine light is first because it's telling you something. But these cars will run for 500,000 miles if you just listen to them. Change that part and my car ran great. So I'll go ahead and post the video on how to change that whole part here now with the rocker arm oil control solenoid. If you have a P16CF code or something similar, the problem could be as easy as replacing this part. And I'm going to show you how to do that here today. All right, the part we're looking to change is actually just right under here. You can see it right, right there. There's two circles. Now, all we're going to have to do is take a flathead screwdriver and go ahead and loosen this hose clamp here. Just like this. Now the hose will be kind of squishy and it should just pull right off if you get it loose enough. Okay. We got to loosen this bolt. This bolt is a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and loosen that, which will free this entire intake manifold. Now that that is loose and the hose is off, this bolt is out, you're going to want to know how to get in here and get this taken apart. So basically, this is a lock tab right here. This tab has to be pushed up and over in order for this piece to slide up like that. So now you should have just enough room to be able to push this part of the tab down and over and up like that, which will allow this manifold to slide out, but I have to have a second hand to do this, so I'm gonna pull it out now. But I'm gonna pull up on this piece with that opened up. Okay, so it popped out, you see? And actually, after taking a better look, I realized there's probably enough room here for me to slide in my ratchet and loosen these three 10 millimeter bolts. I just have to unhook this wiring harness first. To do that, we're going to push the red tab up like that, and then we push down right here and slide this out. Pretty simple. Now, I'll show you the three 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three. Okay, I got my ratchet in here. We're going to go ahead and break these loose. Okay, now with those three bolts out, this will just pop right out. There will be a little bit of oil residue on this. The new one should have some oil on it as well. Let's go ahead and pull this out and, and see if we can assess it and see what happened here. We may or may not be able to. It could be internal. All right, here's the old part. Here's the part. Now, the only thing I've seen here is inside of here, there's a little filter. And there's like a piece of plastic or something jammed in there. It's a piece of plastic to something. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you that it's not supposed to be in there. And I'm not sure that's why it wasn't working properly, but that certainly doesn't help the situation. I'm not going to risk it and put this part back on because it was malfunctioning and I have a new part. But just to consider, maybe inspect yours and see if you have something going on with yours that could be repaired. But for the sake of me not dealing with this twice, I'm just going to go ahead and replace mine. This is actually a really common uh malfunction on this vehicle so common in fact that chevy ran out of these parts they weren't manufacturing them because they were so defective but finally i was able to get an aftermarket one and uh, let's make sure we get it installed correctly and that hopefully this will resolve our problems everything will be installed the exact opposite order that it was uninstalled but uh i'll put it on a time lapse and if you appreciate this content 
Hey guys, I just want to say thank you. You're awesome. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you like this content, don't subscribe. I'm just kidding. Seriously though, now I gotta jump the car off, get it started, and let's look at these codes. If you have a P16CF code. Alright, we're on the road. The car runs better than ever. It turns out that that same code has actually caused a transmission issue. Because it has something to do with the way that the car shifts or the motor runs. Um, when I change that part out, now the car, it runs better than ever. It's got lots of power. It doesn't hesitate to shift. So if you're having any of those issues, there's a small chance that this could fix it. Actually, there's a great chance because that was the only reason my car was not shifting properly. So that is such a relief. This car is in great condition and I will be selling it now because I don't use it. That's the reason it's satisfying as it did. I appreciate y'all again.